All right, hello everybody, welcome back. We have Kronos Returns here with Halo Combat Evolved on Legendary Difficulty. Please take it away. Okay, hey guys, I'm Kronos, and I'll be running Halo CE on Legendary. And with me, I have Goat Rope and Sorx, if you guys would like to introduce yourselves. Hello, my name is Goat Rope. Uh, I've been speedrunning Halo on and off since about 2004. I am one of the three founders of HaloRuns.com, and I'm a huge fan of Chrono's Return. <laughs> uh, ha hello, I'm Sorix. I've been running this game for uh, a couple years uh, less than Go Rope. I've been running this, or been running Halo for about three years, and uh, CE for about the last one year. I've been doing runs on and off. Okay, and. I'll begin the time once I skip the cutscene here, so uh, you guys are ready, so I'll skip the cutscene uh, in 3, 2, 1, go. Okay. Alright. So, uh, Crybomb? <laughs> So legendary difficulty gets to skip the tutorial that viewers might be familiar with because the game assumes ah he's playing on legendary he doesn't need to learn how to aim and you know use the shield and all that so he just leaves right in yeah for the first minute or so of this level you just uh, see him running through these hallways uh, go. he doesn't have a weapon right now so he needs to go to the bridge to captain keys and then after that he'll get a get a weapon and we'll start shooting some guys Although, he doesn't actually get the weapon that Keys tries to give him. Because if you run out of the room fast enough, it breaks the trigger and skips the gun. And it also skips some enemies, so it's good to do. But you get a, you get a gun a couple steps later anyway. Yeah. But you don't get the pistol like you normally would in a, in a casual run. You get an assault yeah. rifle instead. Let's see if I get some good RNG here at this store. Fingers crossed. Oh, only two elites. <laughs> Pretty good. Could nice. be worse. So, so this level mostly consists of running and gunning through enemies, sort of uh, strafing well and hoping you don't uh, don't die, and killing as much as you can on your way. As well as once once you get the, the grenades, you'll see some very well thought out and placed grenades uh, to clear out enemies in his way as well. Yeah, there's a really big focus on perfectly placed plasmas because. The plasma grenade will one-shot any enemy that it hits in this level, and the enemy positioning and movement is like pretty predictable. Like most of the time, they'll be in the same spot, so you can throw a predictive grenade to get them. But you know, there's always a chance that they'll dodge or just stand somewhere weird or do something funny. Sometimes a grenade might stick to a grunt who's going to run towards you with it or run to a corner to save his allies or something. But uh, we're, we're talking with Kronos here. He's 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 got the consistent nades. It's going to be fine. Got a really good checkpoint. Nice. That's really good. This is one of the first, like, really potentially well, inconsistent rooms. I could have gotten through there if I <laughs> if went correctly. Oops. So yeah, so this is probably the the hardest room in the in the level in here. Okay. It's uh. You can kind of. Kind of um uh, get through consistently, but at a certain point, it it does become pretty random. That was a pretty crazy clear. Like the first grenade is supposed to kill two of the four elites, but it killed neither. So now we still got through. Yeah. So coming up, you'll see another nice, nice benefit of placing good grenades is if the enemies, if enemies aren't alerted to you when you throw the grenade, they'll sort of just stand there looking at the nade, uh, not not doing anything, and they'll just die to it like idiots. So. That's come. That's very useful in these two hallways, as you see. Fantastic. And coming up now is a dialogue skip, hopefully called uh, maintenance skip. So he's gonna look in a certain oh, spot. I got keys trolled. <laughs> oh. Thank so, you. So if, <laughs> <laughs> so, so if keys speaks on the intercom, it uh, ruins the the order of the dialogues, so you can't do it. But the idea would have been to. Uh, revert checkpoint at a certain point, which would have skipped the the dialogue, which happened at the time of the checkpoint. 
Which then opens the door faster, of course. Yeah. Oh. Grunt was in the oh, way. Running and gunning. Ooh, that's tough positioning. Okay. Scary. One red. And <laughs> Legendary Halo speedrunners often get accused of running on lower difficulties. People on YouTube are like, hey, this isn't Legendary. When I played Legendary, if I tried to run past everything, I just died. But, uh, you know, speedrunners have found a way. We found we found the paths, <laughs> found the exact shots and nades, and it just works. Yeah. Not to it mention, we still die a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it still happens. It's sure. still legendary. Oh, almost died there. <laughs> that is Ooh, so scary. That's a scary sp okay, play it safe here. Ooh, scary. That's, pro that's probably one thing, uh, one thing you, you mentioned there, YouTube comments. They don't see uh, all the grinds, <laughs> all the resets. <laughs> yeah, YouTube. absolutely. <laughs> okay. And we're on a pillar of autumn. That was, that was, uh, that was really good. Yeah, that was pretty solid POA. At last, are you all right? Can you move? Oh, let's yeah. not miss so... the snake jump here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is very important. So this this snake jump coming up. Not only does it is it just a bit of a faster line to get to where you want, but it also skips some enemy spawns if you do it fast enough. Hey, we did it. <laughs> Yeah, the hardest yeah. trick that's in the, the fast game. version. <laughs> the hardest the, trick in the there, game. <laughs> there are two easier, slower versions of that, but uh, no, Kronos is still going for the fast one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's there's going to be a long walk now for about 30 seconds or so to the next area, so if you have any donations or shoutouts, now is probably a good time. Thank you. I do want to let everybody know here that we are raising money for Save the Children. And for those of you who are enjoying this run after the event is finished and are watching this as a VOD, you too can still support Save the Children by donating through our Tiltify campaign using the links below the video. Any and all support is appreciated. We are very, very close there to reaching 20k. Can we do it during the end of this absolutely fantastic legendary run? Hit a legendary run with a legendary donation total. I believe we can do it, chat. That would be legendary. <laughs> so, in this area, there's six marines total, along with a bunch of enemies. We're supposed to save the pistol. marines. Oh, okay. Nice juke. <laughs> uh, we're gonna <laughs> go this way. Thank you. Plasma okay. pistol overcharge tracking can be very frustrating at times, especially in this spot. So he'll he'll be killing the marines here because if there are, like I mentioned, there's six marines total. If there's if you kill at least five of them, so there's only one or or less alive, then it skips their dialogue before every dropship, and which ends up uh, making the dropships come down faster because they actually would pause in the air, wait for the dialogue, otherwise, which is uh, it's kind of weird. Okay, Mr. Elite. Uh... Okay, oh, perfect. Nice, okay. <laughs> That's a good plasma there pistol. A, there's, a, there's an extra, like, a secondary bonus to having the dropships come down quickly, which is that, uh, and I think, like, 2015, uh, we found a glitch where as these dropships come down, there's five of them total that come down, but there's a little glitch in the programming which if you make them spawn fast enough the third one will fail to spawn like i believe the way it works is that there can only ever ex be two drop ships in existence so if you you know clear the first two really really quickly then the third one is, tries to spawn but it, there's already it's already at the maximum number of drop ships so it just skips it completely and you yeah. don't have to kill it i'm not getting yeah, drop skip by the way i didn't clear Probably that not. ship <laughs> fast enough unfortunately i oh, had three grunts alive yeah, so it, it is not a huge time save. I think it's about 15 seconds, but it does skip. But it does also skip like the hardest dropship that has the most yeah. enemies, so that's nice. Oh, I did, my plasma nade didn't even kill any enemies here. This is bad. Uh... This oh, the dropship. Very... Come on. That was. <laughs> I just no. killed the elite. And the dropship oh. killed me because I'm one red. 
Good checkpoint though. Good checkpoint. Yeah. Yep. These are tough nades. I, I think a lot of runners don't even do that vertical nade. You just do the, the secondary one. Yeah. It is it is kind of a bonus where you don't have to do it, but it does it does help sometimes. Okay. That's that's what we needed. It's better. That was good. Clean. So now Kronos back up the strats right here. <laughs> yeah. I think this is one of the like infamously hard sections of the game that a lot oh, yeah, of people sure. remember from playing as like a kid. But man, it's, it's the second level. This is like the first area. It's, it's, it's bizarre. Oh. oh, that's really bad. I didn't get a checkpoint. Oof. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, definitely even a drop the, ship. Even in the speedrun, I, I would top classes as at least top three hardest sections in the, in the speedrun as well. Yep. Yeah, no doubt about that. One thing, uh, one thing uh, some of you are probably thinking is, wait, hey, hey, you don't have to clear this area, you can just skip this. Which is true, you can just walk past this and, and ignore it. But okay, I got the checkpoint. Do clear it, okay. Good checkpoint. If you do clear it at the end, you will get a Warthog, um, which is obviously a lot faster than walking, and it ends up being faster to actually clear it and get the warthog than it is to walk the entire rest of the level. See you grunt. That's Don't better. hide from me. The grunt's hiding. <laughs> Peek. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay, now this elite. Yeah, the enemies here love to clip into the geometry, and uh, the way they clip in actually puts their body in a position where if you try to hit them with an overcharge plasma pistol, it'll actually like home into the the dropship and not hit the enemy. Yeah. Very smart, the 2001 AI. Yeah. So this is another segment where the dialogue is getting skipped normally. Uh, no, is that true? The the the, the warthog being dropped? Uh, I don't. I don't. Think, oh, this, I think it does sometimes. Yeah, isn't that an MCC thing? I'm not sure. Who knows? <laughs> okay. So now we're on to that. That was the hardest part of the level. Done. So now we're on to the second part, which is going to involve. First, we're gonna go through this uh, cave. Lots uh, of driving here. And everybody's favorite dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> Someone built this, so it must lead somewhere. Natural formation. I've hacked into the Covenant battle network. We're actually broadcasting tactical data. So the, there's gonna be lots of. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, we're about to see the first warthog fling of the run, which I really like to. Oh yeah. Uh, it's a little Very physics glitch where you, you spin the Warthog in a direction and hop out at the same time, and the back of the Warthog kind of slides into you and bumps you, uh, which can bump you horizontally or up in this case. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's going to let him get up on a ledge that's ordinarily inaccessible, which actually, so not only does it get him to the button to activate the bridge faster, it also skips a cutscene trigger, which is obviously going to save a bunch of... Yeah. Yeah, nice. One thing, one thing to add about that, uh, the Warthog fling is, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but something a lot of people I don't think know about it is the reason you would, if you played this game a lot, you would pro you might expect the Warthog to kill you, knowing how vehicle physics work, but uh, Bungie programmed it in a way that it makes you invincible to uh, splatter or vehicle splatter damage right after you exit a vehicle, so you wouldn't get splattered on your own vehicle. And that's yep. part of why, why it works. And that exact property has enabled a lot of glitches, some in the speedrun, some not in the speedrun, where you can use vehicles as you hop out of them to push you through doors, push you through walls. You can even launch that way if you set up a big explosion underneath the vehicle and then jump on top of it so the vehicle hits you. Uh, if you flip it, then you get that vehicle in vulnerability and you just get bounced, you know, a kilometer in the sky. Yeah. Famous trick involving that on this level, tower to tower. Oh yeah, definitely. Look up tower to tower if you haven't seen that. Um, so this final area here, there's three different 
pods of marines and it's kind of non-linear how you can approach it. it you can go in whatever order you want and uh obviously as speedrunners uh, people have figured out what the best order is and uh what what people found is that there are two sections where um you know there are lots of waves of enemies that you have to go through to actually get to the end of it um so we skip the, we, we finish those two first then go to the third area which has you know very few enemies but um i don't know if, if you want to describe what happens here chronos but he's going to take an unorthodox approach to rescuing the <laughs> marines here yeah so instead of saving all of these marines we're going to uh you know do the I office. think that kind oh, of hurt. We don't, we don't <laughs> remove that, so to speak. Yeah, so the, the game wants to be kind of forgiving to you. Like, if, imagine you're a level designer. You don't want to make a level like this where if all the Marines die, then it just automatically fails you and you have to start again. So they just, you know, recorded some Cortana dialogue where she says, oh, we didn't save anybody. Oh, that sucks. Let's move on. And then the mission progresses. So we, we just kind of accelerate that process. And uh, it's good. It, it, it it's fast. And so yeah. in the second area here, um, the Marines are positioned such that the, the enemies actually do most of the work. Like the Marines, on legendary difficulty specifically, um, the Marines just get melted by the Covenant. So there's a couple of guys up on a ridge that he's going to shoot, um, but the rest of them in amongst the rocks, you're not even going to see. Uh, they're just going to die on their own. Uh, conversely, if you're playing this on easy mode, the Marines are really strong, and they actually win the fight against the Covenant. So on easy, you have to drive into these rocks, throw some grenades at the Marines, and actually kill them yourself. This is one yeah. small section that's technically faster on Legendary. So I'm waiting here yeah, a little while just so I can make sure that they die. Yeah, Sometimes that's, that's they... the marathon safety <laughs> yeah. strat. If, if you take... Or, or if you stay there too short of a time, the Marines can sometimes, like, one of them just lives forever for some reason. Yeah, they'll hide behind a rock or something. And I think once you drive far enough away, the fight stops happening, like the AI get frozen. Yeah. And so if they haven't died yet, then it's just... Uh, this section is particularly cool in cooperative speedruns because you can send one player to each uh, section and like reunite later. And you can just take a really unique path that you couldn't do without uh, having okay. two players. This is the third area. All you have to do is kill everything. Um, so there are a bunch of enemies on the ground. I think when there are five enemies left alive, then a single dropship spawns. And then after he kills all of those enemies, uh, the level is just on the timer. You get rescued by a foe hammer, and we're going to be moving on to truth and reconciliation. Uh, but this yeah. is this is one of the fun sections where you actually get to use a sniper rifle, which I think is a lot of people's favorite. What weapon. are these enemies doing? They're hiding. <laughs> Stop hiding. You also, also notice that he deliberately picked up. <laughs> he picked up a warthog gunner uh, because you know a marine with an assault rifle is basically useless, but a marine on the warthog gun actually you know rips you weren't there up. all along i was looking for you hello come on this elite okay don't don't mind this driving <laughs> we're technically not losing time on this yet because the drop ship is still flying as long as we get there in time uh, yeah. not in time but uh, a little we're going late, to that's fine. do some improvised splatter strats <laughs> Yeah, it gets the job done. Yeah, it's way better than trying to fight them head on with a sniper rifle. Yeah. If you come late. <laughs> Spatter's so very good in this game. Pretty much one shots everything. Yeah. And I don't have audio, but I assume Cortana has said that's the last of them, which yep. is the, yeah, that's the signal. That's the signal that means you didn't mess anything up in the previous areas, and you can breathe a sigh of relief. <laughs> yep. Well, on to uh, the next level, which uh, I think uh, Kronos would agree is probably the most difficult in this yeah, speedrun. Yeah, it's definitely the most difficult level now. It has... But it's the coolest. Yeah, it has some of the hardest combat sections along with the most insane tricks <laughs> so yeah yeah so, so in a lot of levels in this game you can sort of just run through them and throw nades and so on you know well planned nades and just sort of run through that is not the case in this level you really have to go out of, out of your way killing enemies and uh, sort of adapt it won't be 
the exact same every time, so doing a legendary combat fast is very difficult. As well as it has a couple of hard skips as well later in the latter half of the level. Yeah, I really like Truth and Reconciliation because it's it's a perfect little like microcosm of what Halo speedrunning is. You know, okay. You've got, uh. <laughs> you've got enemies to run past. You've got you know you waiting fights reaction. where you have to kill everybody. Yeah, you got chain reactions. Uh, you got huge grenade jumps. You got out of bounds clipping. There's all sorts of cool stuff. In this. The only thing it's missing is vehicle combat. Yeah. And got chain reacted. Uh, yeah, I guess we should explain chain reactions. So, for, for, if you don't know, uh, when you kill an enemy, they drop grenades on the ground. You can see them right in front of Cronus right now. Um, those grenades, while they're on the ground, looking all peaceful and innocent, if another explosion happens close to them, in like a pretty big radius, it will actually ignite those grenades and they will explode for full legendary damage. Um, it's extremely dangerous because a lot of these enemies drop a lot of grenades. And it's very easy to ignite them, and they'll like, as we call it, a chain reaction. They'll blow up and like, creep their way towards you and uh, ruin your speed run. Yeah. This is a. If you look at old speed, even like 2014 speed runs of this section, man, we were so much slower. We like stopped and sniped every single enemy, threw grenades, like blah blah blah. No, 2020, you just run past everything. You just you just keep running. You never let go of them. Yeah, just running good. Just running gun, good nades, good aim. Yep. Okay, I got a checkpoint. That was really oh, late of good. a checkpoint. Okay. Yeah, some of these sections are just really tough and you can just die. So, you have to play around checkpoints and sometimes you will or won't get them depending. So, it's always nice to get yep. that safety checkpoint, especially for events like this. <laughs> Oh, yeah, one cool thing about this level that not everybody knows is the sniper rifle he's using is supposed to have a maximum ammo of 24 plus the four that you have loaded, uh, but it actually starts with 64 plus four. So he's free to just snipe as much as he wants, you know, forever. Yeah. He's got so many, so many bullets, and there's a bunch of refills throughout the level. So you pretty much don't have to think about sniper ammo until like yeah. the very end. Yeah, if you're ever playing this level on legendary, never drop the sniper rifle. Yeah. All right, so he's about to do the gravity lift fight, which is an incredibly difficult section of the fight. Uh, there's going to be a dropship. He's going to kill some enemies. And as soon as he kills these, uh, eight waves are going to spawn in sequence. And he's going to try to insta-kill every single wave as they land uh, using grenades and snipes. And if it goes perfectly, it's going to look phenomenal. The Marine threw a nade at me. That was rude. Ooh. Yeah, so this is... I think earlier we talked about enemies occasionally... You know, dodging out of the way to to dodge to avoid grenades. This is definitely one of those segments where you feel that because they've got eight chances to do it, and as soon as they do, the wave stops spawning, and your speedrun gets a little bit slower. And of course, the yeah. marines can contribute to that as well, which is annoying. Oh, that okay. yeah, still going pretty well though. The grunt's dead body Ooh, hit the nade. <laughs> oh no! Oh. <laughs> oh, sorry, marine. You were in the way. This lift fight is interesting. I have no plasma yeah, pistol it's ammo. Fine. Okay, the marine died because <laughs> like the. Ch <laughs> okay, this this lift fight has been <laughs> really interesting. Yeah, so so once one or two waves don't go perfect, it can be really hard to get back on track. Definitely. Grunt's needlers right, killed a marine, down. and the splash damage hit me. <laughs> Okay. Hopefully we don't get reinforcements okay, because one marine died. Okay, we're so, good. So, as soon as the gravity lift takes him up into the ship, he's going to do a, a phenomenal trick called Belly Skip, because the area he's in is called the Belly of the Beast. Uh, this is a physics, physics glitch. That Covenant tank that he's throwing grenades at, when it explodes, it actually changes its model slightly. So he's going to stand between the wings, shoot it so it explodes, and that's going to clip him inside of the vehicle. And then if he looks in the right spot and it pushes the right buttons, it's actually going to bump him totally out of bounds, straight up into the ceiling, and he's going to hopefully land on a one-pixel ledge and then hop his way uh, to safety. Unfortunately, leaving the Marines to die, but you know it's he's rescuing Captain Keys as quickly as possible, so I think it's for a good cause. And this is a, a phenomenally difficult trick. 
to very precise lineups. Also, lots like the and first... lots and lots of practice. Yeah. First instance instance of the in the run of a teleport as well, I believe. That's true. Yeah. Nice. So All right, he's out of bounds, but he's not out of the woods yet. He's still got a lot of platforming to do on little one pixel ledges. Uh, he just killed a marine there because later in the level. He's actually going to want to, uh, what we call, aggro the Marines. If you kill too many of your allies on purpose, then the game you know, sets them against you, and that's actually going to be useful for a skip later. Right now, he's hopping along like rafters and beams and like the tops of walls. Uh, it, it looks hard to navigate, but he's, you know, he's done this a lot of times. And this is obviously skipping a ton of combat. Uh, the, the first room he was in, you're supposed to kill 12 waves of Covenant, but he just teleported out. Now we're going past you know, more hallways, more rooms. And yeah, nice. that's it. Awesome. Well okay. done. Well done. Yeah, Kronos was using the, the new, the newer way to do that with the, the updated MCC graphics as well, which uh, allows you to see out of bounds. It's Only also slightly the... faster too if done perfectly. Which is pretty yeah. nice. Yeah. So in the in the base game, normally you would only when you're out of bounds, you would only see uh, see the room you were last in, and all all other textures wouldn't be loaded in. You would just have the collision, so you would have to do that blind. Oh, quad stack. Oh, Let's go. I didn't pick up. The... <laughs> I didn't oh, no. pick up a no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the, we, we get to redo this, and I can actually explain it. So for people who don't know, there's a power-up in this room called the Overshield. And what it's supposed to do is just give you a triple power shield for a while. But um, right as you pick it up, you get about two seconds of complete invulnerability to everything. So he's stacking four grenades in the same spot, picking up the Overshield and jumping. And he's going to land on top of this ship. With one more grenade, he's going to get to the third story of this, uh, this uh, hangar bay, this loading bay, and he's going to skip, like, six minutes of combat or something that was a well nice and, backup <laughs> yeah yeah it was, it was all good um and so because he kind of glitched with the tricks the fact that he skipped that last room uh, near the end of the level he's supposed to have to backtrack to that room but because he skipped it the first time the game kind of glitches out and it doesn't actually require him to go back there so the level's going to end in this room even though it's supposed to end in the previous room while he's backtracking yeah well, we're going to have to backtrack to this room, and then it's going to... Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, have, we do have to rescue Captain Keys. Much of this game is about rescuing Captain Keys. Yeah. He gets caught a lot. <laughs> yep. Spoilers if you haven't played Halo 1. That grunt was hiding. <laughs> <laughs> this is another run-and-gun situation. Just trying to get past everybody as quickly as possible. And it is important to kill everything because, as we said, you're going to backtrack through here, and anything that you leave alive is still here, uh, along with extra new enemies. Okay. Uh, overcharge there, that's pretty rare. Handling it though. Jeez, <laughs> that jackal is oh. tanky. Uh, We're finally reaching the bottom okay. of the uh, sniper clip here. That was <laughs> dumb. Shots, <dude. laughs> that was actually so dumb. Okay. Wow. Oh, what happened to your overcharge there? It, it disappeared because I ran out of ammo, and if you oh, it's, it, it's yeah, okay. if you have like very little ammo in your plasma pistol, there's a chance that it won't fire what whatever you're like shooting. So I just got super unlucky there that it didn't hit <laughs> or shoot out. Yeah. It's fine though. So. About to get to the prison, Captain Keyses. Rescue him. And uh, just one more call, but clear here. <laughs> kind of want to save my to sniper here. ammo, so that'll be extra two bullets that I have for this end section. We should head back to the shuttle okay. and call for evac. So yeah, so I'm taking a bit of an unorthodox approach to saving keys in these marines. Yeah, this section is extra dangerous because Captain Keys loves to throw grenades, and if he dies, the level resets, or the, the checkpoint resets. So uh, it's good to clear all the enemies so Captain Keys doesn't get any strange ideas. But yeah. once all of the Covenant are dead here, he's going to, uh, you may be sensing a theme here, he's going to be shooting his own allies. Um, because, as we explained on Halo, 
Uh, if there's a trigger that depends on dialogue, if we can skip the dialogue, the level's going to happen faster. And if your allied marines are mad at you because you've been shooting them with your Why gun... Why are you up front, uh, keys? Oh. Then uh, it skips the dialogue and it ends the level instantly. So that's why he killed the single marine earlier in the belly of the beast section, and that's why he killed that marine there. And you can see on his radar, there's all the red dots. Those are the marines chasing after the uh, uh, the rampant master chief. So he's going to kill the three elites here. It's going to try to do some dialogue, and then the level should instantly end. Uh, yeah. Where's the elites? Sometimes the elites hide. They're camoed and they don't like, the reveal themselves. <laughs> uh, okay. Like. Don't know what was no. up with on that. M on Spawns MCC, another thing is the elites are actually super invisible. <laughs> so oh, yeah, their swords actually... are supposed to be visible. Yeah, yeah but right. with a belly skip, they're not visible always. Oh, they're both here. No wonder. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is rough because all three of them have no swords showing, so you can't see them at all. Like you can barely yeah. see their outline with like. Right now? No, yeah, there, are quite a few, there are quite there a few go. imperfections in MCC, unfortunately, because this game what? has been played I killed them all in five it. times. <laughs> okay. Like this oh, this no. game was ported from Xbox to PC and then back to 360 for anniversary and then forward to MCC and now over to PC again. I believe that's five ports total. Oh, I'm dead. So. Well, what is he doing down breath. there? I was looking for him. <laughs> What's going on? Come on. Some very strange elite spawns. Normally, there's two, all like right next to the door where you come in, and then one more in the back somewhere. Like so you actually unusual. can't see them. You actually can't see all of them. It's actually so dumb. What the heck? <laughs> okay. Okay, where are you? You're here, yeah? Yeah? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Finally! Please! Alright, we, <laughs> <did was>, <laughs> we did it. was... I can't it's believe that. that. That section was <laughs> actually the... Fantastic... <laughs> I can't believe what happened there. <laughs> Alright, we're on Silent Cartographer now. It's a fantastic level. Yeah. Uh, very famous Got... speedrunning level. Very fast. Yeah. Got quite some history behind it. But we could probably squeeze some donations in, if that's cool with Kronos. Yeah. We're walking along a beach for the first time. Yeah, we got some donations here for it. Uh, we have a $20 donation from X Tunguska saying, Halo 1, 2, and San Andreas were games that defined my early teen years. What a great way to end the weekend. Good luck to you, Kronos. And if you get first try Dark Door, I will donate another $10. First try Dark Door. That's asking for a lot. Ooh, boy. That's a ten chance. That's a yeah. That's a forty percent chance. That's a reference to a coming a trick that's coming up on the library. But uh, silent cartographer, we should talk about this level. So if you're not familiar, or if you played this game as a kid, you know this level is taking. It takes place on a giant island. And there are two different facilities on the island. The way it's supposed to go is you help your allies on the beach do sort of a D-Day fight, which we've already skipped. We're, we're just running away from that. You're supposed to go to the map room that we're trying to find to find our way around the halo. And then you discover that the door is locked, so you have to come back up to the surface, go find the security room, go in there, unlock the door, go back to the map room, and then you make your way down a bunch of hallways and tunnels to the bottom of that shaft um, and push the button and, you know, find the map of the halo. Um, instead of all of that, we're just going to glitch our way through the locked door and not even bother with the security system. And instead of going down the hallways and tunnels, Cronus is just going to jump down a giant hole and survive. And then he's going to jump back up. Um, and it's going to be really cool. Uh, yeah. This whole this level is like is like a forty second cutscene, and then a, where nothing happens, and then a minute of walking where nothing happens, and then a, like thirty seconds of driving where nothing really happens, and then there's just thirty seconds of insane tricks, and then yeah. the level's over. That's it's it. That's it. And it's oh, it's a thing of beauty, honestly. Okay, so coming down here, when, as soon as he turns left, this is the locked door. Don't let them lock the doors. Yeah, so Warthog Fling first, get through this door. Pick up the plasma nades, of course, that's very important. Shoot to cancel the cutscene. Fall onto the very edge to not take damage. Land below, not grabbing the overshield. 
hit the button for the map room, skip the cutscene, hop back out. And I was going to do one of my favorite tricks in the entire run. Find the spot on the ground, look up, throw 8,000 grenades. <laughs> pick up the overshield, which I, I will again repeat, gives you invincibility for a couple seconds. And boom, blast off to the moon. There are a bunch of different versions of that trick, and all of them are incredibly difficult. Oh, you're doing the triple nade too? Oh, okay. Sh- yeah, this is a second secondary. Uh, uh, oh, <laughs> not many people do this trick. Okay. Not many people I'll do that trick it because time. it's pretty hard. Okay. All right, that's that's awesome. I didn't think. Yeah, that most speedrunners in in a full game run would just run up the last okay. couple hallways, but yeah. I'll, I'll just oh, go up that's... regularly. <laughs> it was a good attempt. It was a good attempt. I love I love that yeah. you have the, the guts to try that. Yeah, yeah. It was just a couple of hallways to get through here. And he's got the full overshield now, which is, you know, very helpful. Oh, the plasma pistols all fell off or glitched through the world. That's unfortunate. It's nice to have one here for the elites. But it's probably okay because he's got the overshield. Yeah, sure. That's pretty much it. There's a couple invisible elites to kill on your way out, but that's pretty much the whole level. Yeah, at this point, it's pretty much just auto scroller waiting for dialogue to happen, and then waiting for the pelican to fly, to fly in so it can escort you out and end the level. Yep. These guys instantly die for some reason. Oof. Camel got behind you. Oh, here you are. Okay, so the the. They died to pistol headshot. <laughs> it's a fun little manip you can do. Basically, if you stand right there, they all just kind of run into the same spot and die to a headshot. <laughs> so they can just all get stacked right there. Yeah. And then all of their grenade drops get stacked. You can throw a grenade in there and then accidentally blow yourself up with a chain reaction. <laughs> And that sound cartographer, that went really well. Very well done. Yo, TCR, the donation level. So oh, I can donation? <laughs> sorry, I did, that's sorry. I should have been more clear. There's like one really <laughs> awesome trick. And then he's, so basically there's a deload at near the start of this level where he's just going to despawn every enemy for the rest of the map. And then a completely empty map. That's it. And then... Um, and then yeah, after that, after yeah. that, we'll hit you up. Um, yeah. But the so if you watched speedruns of this game, you know between 2001 and 2015, you probably would be familiar familiar with the bridge fall trick, where you you know jump off a cliff and bounce down some rocks and what have you, and it, it does the same deload, but then you're stuck on the ground on foot running. Um, at some point, some clever soul, I don't know who it was, if, if somebody knows, you can feel free to name drop them. Mm, uh, not sure. Cool. They, they found a way to uh, manipulate the AI in the next area to actually uh, bring... There's an there's a enemy banshee, like an enemy flying ship, uh, for people who don't know the Halo terminology, that you can you know manipulate to come towards you, and then it crashes into the wall in a very, very specific angle where it thinks that it's like upturned its vehicle, and it actually ejects the pilot. And the vehicle just falls in front of you, you steal it, and fly away. It's... Yeah. This trick is beyond anything I would have imagined when you know when we were starting out speedrunning this game years ago. But here you go, you stand in this spot, wait for the banshee to fly to you, you crouch, it's gonna come over to this wall, move forward, move right, and kaboom. First try. Nice job, dude. That's sick. I I have so much trouble with that trick. It's so difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and now he's gonna be flying in a straight line for like oh actually no, you have teleports. Yeah, never mind. He's yeah. flying for like two minutes instead of four minutes. But yeah, we we can do a couple donations now. Yeah, that trick also, goes. Yeah, go ahead, donation. Cheers. We got a, a twenty dollar donation from Wacky saying, "Good luck on quad, mate. Always love to see Kronos run at my favorite category." <laughs> and did someone stay HaloRuns.com? We also have a fifty dollar donation from Jan Goose saying, "Halo car, Halo car, Jeep, Jeep, Jeep. <laughs> Good luck, Kronos." <laughs> yep. And uh, finally, we have a $32 donation from Cheeseburger X Apocalypse saying, let's get to $20k before Johnson shares sweet embrace with an elite. And yeah, please do keep your donations coming in. We are very, very close to that 20k there. And uh, as I speak right now, it appears a big one has uh, just came in. So 
we've just received a $210 donation from Tiny Tim saying, hey all, okay, I had to donate again. I can't express enough just how much I appreciate the whole speedrunning community. I am lucky enough to be able to help support an amazing cause as well. Thank you again for all the amazing runs this weekend. It's been an absolutely fantastic weekend and I cannot wait until the next event. Cheers. Thank you very much, all of you, for our donations. And thank you, Tiny Tim, for that massive 210 donation. That does mean we have hit a legendary $20,000 during this legendary Halo run. Thank you very much, everybody. Do please keep your donations coming in. That is awesome. Wow. Let's go. 20, well done. Yeah. Uh, thank you for all the So, Wacky and Jangoose are, you know, shout outs to them. They are members of the Halo Runs community. Um, they're very active, cool dudes. Uh, but speaking of cool dudes, Kronos is about to do a Banshee teleport. This is a physics glitch where he's going to position, he's going to park the Banshee, sit under it in a very specific spot, and then punch it. And as he punches the vehicle, it's going to kind of wobble a little bit. And as it wobbles, it's going to like come down on his head and smush him the tiniest, tiniest bit. And he's going to clip inside of the geometry. And as soon as you're inside some other geometry, the game gets very upset about that and it tries to eject you. And usually it only ejects you like a foot or a meter to the side. But if you go in, per in like the perfect, perfect spot, that's what happens. And he just got teleported like a couple hundred meters, I think. Yeah. He's about to do it again. It it's way faster than walking. Uh, it, uh, it skips a huge section. It's it's great. It's a wonderful thing. Yeah. Teleports have been al pretty much almost, I think, every new skip in the past two years or something. Uh, except maybe one, uh, Boo, I'm thinking, uh, uses some teleport of some kind. It's really been a huge discovery in this game. Nice first try teleports. That's not easy. You'll notice he actually <laughs> teleported past the like actual end of the level, but there's still a usable button in there, so yeah. it works. That was good. That was a great uh, AOT. Yeah, well done. It was uh, one thing. I want to mention was he was actually during the second half of that flying he was shooting the whole time and that was to delay a checkpoint because when you're shooting the game counts you as so in combat and uh, delays any checkpoint until you're out of combat so if he shoots uh, for that whole duration duration he'll get the, the checkpoint right before the the banshee teleport in case something goes wrong this is guilty spark this is uh if, you, if you're watching this stream to learn the Halo story, we're about to let you down. Because there's a very pivotal moment in the plot of this game that we are skipping completely. Um, most people are probably familiar that we've been fighting the Covenant, these, these you know technologically advanced aliens for this whole game. Um, what's coming up here are the Flood, the parasitic zombie race that have been hiding, lurking on this Halo ring. And there's a very dramatic, what we call the reveal room, where there's this cool cutscene where you rewash a Marine's, like, uh, like, body cam of what was happening and you you see these monsters and you, you see, it's all like horror themed and creepy um the monsters slowly creep in and start attacking you but we're just going to skip the whole thing so as far as the master chief knows he's fighting aliens and then he glitches into a wall and then all of a sudden there's these new things with no explanation <laughs> um so this is called reveal skip because we're not going to the reveal room you see on the other side of the door other side of this room there's a door that he's supposed to go to with the green lights oh the no. grenade jumps through <laughs> oh. here the geometry is a little bit glitched. He can get stuck in the ground and then jump onto the little like ledge that's ac across the way from him. It's obviously very hard. Everything out of bounds in this game is hard because uh, like walls are only, they're one pixel wide and they're very, very tough to stay on top of, especially because they're invisible. Um, but there you go. Second try is really good for that trick. It's a super tough oh, trick. I almost did. Now, <laughs> I did it so quickly. Almost. <laughs> Like I yeah, also, like <laughs> yeah, you did the I also dance there. Yeah, I almost yeah, got a bunch of different variations oh. of that trick. <laughs> that would have been insane. <laughs> okay, and still really good. Time. Yeah, now it's time for one of the like earliest speedrun tricks ever invented that people still Camo. mess up sometimes. The very <laughs> famous camo jump. Camo jumo. Yeah, people really like saying jumo in the Halo community. Amazing. That's oh, like the one first extra room. Hardest trick <laughs> in the game. Seven. 
Yeah, so this level, did it, whatever happened? I, so this level was like a 349 for a while, and then like a 348, and it was, so the level's called 343 Guilty Spark, and it was creeping really, really close to 343. Yeah. And didn't somebody just cut it to 342? Uh, or is that still no, not happening? No, I think it's 344 right now by Burnt. Oh, it's still 344, okay. Yeah, it's, it's a super fast level, but I, I, I just think it would be fantastic if it ended up at 343 on 343. Yeah, someone's gotta do it eventually. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> whenever someone does, it'll be illegal to bop that time. Yep. Did some fun backup strats right there for fun. <laughs> I like that extra camo jump with no camo. Yep. Yeah, Skips so the spawns as well. The, uh, the end of this area, the end of this level, he's going to go back out into a swamp thing. This is an area that we did not understand for a really long time. Uh, from our perspective, trying to speed around this game, all the way up until about 2014, um, we, you'd go out to the end, you'd reach this tower where Fohammer's talking to you, and there would be Flood there, there would be Sentinels there, and you just fight them, and you just keep killing Flood, you keep killing Flood, keep killing Flood, and then the level would end. Sometimes it would end really fast, sometimes it would take like two minutes, and we didn't really know why, until at some point somebody actually reverse engineered the game, found the scripts for how all of the stuff works, and oh, then we found out... that checkpoint is insane, oh my god. <laughs> what we found out was that the trigger for ending the level has nothing to do with killing enemies. Um, what they decided to make the trigger is whether your allied sentinels die or not. Um, I guess they wanted you to have the feeling of like you're fighting alongside these new like little robot things that are hovering around. It's like, oh cool, then as soon as they die you start to panic, but then don't worry, the level ends. So instead of waiting for that, Cronus is just going to kill them himself using a plasma weapon. And their spawns are super, super random. They can be like way up in the sky behind a tree hiding somewhere. But those are pretty good spawns. You kill them quick, yeah. and now the level's going to end. Continuing the uh, running theme of uh, killing allies. Yeah, no, it's it's rife in this game. It's library time, everybody's favorite level. But your 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 childhood memories of this level are very different from what's about to happen here. Uh, this is, I guess you would call flood bumps teleports technically. This is a pretty revolutionary trick that was found, I think, late 2014 as well, um, where you know somebody theorized that. Uh, you know, we, we know that in, in Halo, if two things intersect, then one of them is going to get ejected, right? That's simple enough. That happens in a lot of video games. Uh, somebody theorized if you take what we call a reviver flood, which are flood enemies that once you shoot them a couple times, they fake die and then they revive, they stand back up like zombie style. Um, if you stand on top of one of those flood as it stands up, um, you can actually get into a glitched like super position and get bumped in a direction. And if you do that, right next to a locked door maybe it would put you through and so we tried it and it worked and now there's like six places we can do it in the game and it's it's amazing because some of these doors are locked for like 60 90 seconds like really really big chunks of time were shaved off as soon as this trick got found yeah there's a couple like uh segmented strats i think so it ends up being a bit more but in the full game run, something like six yeah yeah. I am missing my nades. Okay, that's fine. I'll Hello. just do it this way. We need this shotgun. <laughs> that that's that's something that people do know about the flood, is that you want a shotgun. That's oh. very, very, very important. Yeah. Ouch. Okay, whoa. Calm down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh oh, uh oh. So this is this is another one of these sections where YouTube commenters accuse us of not playing on legendary. Everybody has memories of you know hiding, crouched in a corner, just praying that flood don't come around to find you. But you know, legendary speedrunners, they just hold W. That's all they do. Just keep Yeah. Couldn't get the swag shotgun strat feels bad. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Yeah. If you if you do uh oh, the with the whole bubble rats, if you do know where the most den dangerous enemies are spawning and a couple nade lineups, it's it's not too bad most of the time. Uh yeah. Stop, please. Hello? <laughs> Why am I getting shot in both directions? <laughs> okay. Okay. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That was pretty. That's pretty uh -huh. uncommon. Getting getting chased like that, yeah. that does not usually happen. It's pretty it. So that's the first floor <laughs> of uh, the library. First floor of many. Mm -hmm. 
What's happening on the second floor? How do you feel about carrier bump, Krona? Uh, <laughs> considering on MCC, I find it has a chance of crashing the game. I don't think I'll go for it. Oh yeah, <laughs> great choice, <laughs> fantastic like choice. Good idea. <laughs> okay. Yes. So this door does have a strat that's not only very inconsistent, but also crashes the game sometimes. Um, you can do so that the same type of flood bump we described, you can kind of do it with these carrier forms. There's like a different version of it, but it's extremely inconsistent and there's no way to humanly make it inconsistent. Yeah. So it, it is actually oh, good RNG because it, uh, oh, nice. <laughs> I like it. So what, what bumps you with the, the carrier bumps is the, uh, the little popcorn flood, the little infection forms that pop out of the carrier. Or what uh, what bumps you through the door and their spawns are are random so yeah <laughs> i guess we should explain he's not just wasting time to spell out esa which is awesome uh the door here is locked we have to wait for the monitor to come and open i believe it's a 45 second time but that yeah, uh, that should be the last door that we have to wait for maybe maybe fifth door we'll see <laughs> yeah um depends how lucky we get yeah it'll i, I i'm believing in the in the first try Dark door. Okay. First try that was our first try last door. Yeah, let's see it. <laughs> um, one of the uh, one of the problems with this trick when when it was first discovered, it was really inconsistent because you know flood are only they only do the reviver thing forty percent of the time I believe maybe yeah, less forty like, percent uh, yeah um, and you know that's pretty unreliable and if you don't have a checkpoint to retry it it's it you just I don't know it, it you can't do it. Um, but over the years, people have developed really reliable ways to get specific flood in specific positions and then get a checkpoint. And there are actually a couple places, I think two places total, where we know how the random number, like the randomness generator works in this game. And we can actually force it to spawn revivers, like guaranteed. Uh, the first one's at the start of this level. It actually happens automatically. And the second one is on keys, uh, which is a couple levels from now. Yeah, it's... Uh... And it's it's important that it's at the start of the level because of how uh, how it works. Yeah, the the RNG seed is reset at, on each level, and it's always set to the same value. So all enemies that are spawned with the level always have the exact same RNG. Yep. This is Which the is hardest very key section, because... by the way. Oh boy, I got shotgunned oh, yeah. so much there. That's scary. Oof. Yeah. Ooh, Shotgun wow. flutter, no bueno. And there's still rocket flutter around the corner. Oh man! Whoa. Wow, your shield's <laughs> recharged. Wow. Okay. How does that happen? That's awesome. Oh, All right, okay. living with one red. Oh, Let's do no. it. <laughs> Not quite. Oh, did I jinx it? Yeah. Uh, that's my fault. I apologize sincerely. <laughs> I take yeah. full responsibility. It's definitely like one of the hardest sections of library here. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. And it's it's kind of it's one of those things that's hard because we make it hard as speedrunners, like. You could just stop. You could just stop and, you know, shoot everybody, but we're trying to go fast here, you know? And if you can <laughs> sometimes get through, then you gotta try. That's just how that's just how Halo speedrunning works and that's just how all speedrunning work. Yeah. Not to mention a lot of the time retrying it retrying the fast strat a couple times ends up being faster than going slow anyway. Well absolutely, yeah. Man, okay. those assault rifle flood. That just... that is <laughs> Actually, pretty unlucky. Oh boy! Ooh, shotgun guy again. Yeah, this is. Uh, if you, this okay. is. The, I, I I really like. We were talking earlier about YouTube commenters who don't appreciate the amount of like grinding, the amount of effort, and like just determination and persistence that goes into speedrunning. I like that marathons kind of like force the average viewer to experience just <laughs> like oh this is this is what actually goes into speed running you know this yeah. is what the game throws at you this is what you have to deal with for hours and days and months and years sometimes just to get sure. that perfect speed run okay can so i not get shot time, here hopefully. yes what is that shotgun flood though it's actually really dumb okay man that's so weird because oh, wow. He's definitely not spawned. You're just getting the same bad luck every. Okay. Got the shields back. Let's see what I can do here. Let's make sure that guy dies. That last time I died because that guy didn't die. 
because he smacked me. Yeah. Yeah, should be good now. Okay. Nice. That's good. All right. Sweet. I've definitely seen that go a lot worse. <laughs> For sure. That's two floors done. Third floor. Here's where. Third floor is the <laughs> big one. Best floor. And I realized I misspoke Debatable. earlier when I when I said that there were five um, flood bumps on this level. There used to be five, and then the third one at the famous ninety second room actually got obsoleted by a better trick than a flood bump because it doesn't yeah. require a flood. Yeah. I believe it's called Light Bump. I believe yep. that's the official name. Indeed. One of the newer tricks in the run. And it is, of my course, personal, a My personal favorite trick in the run. <laughs> Just love doing it. I, I genuinely can't tell if that's sarcastic. No, I, 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 I really do. I really do. Okay, good. I know a lot of people hate Light Bump. But really? I, it got found kind of after I stopped playing this game as actively. So I, I'm not familiar with these things. But it's, I think it's awesome to watch. I really oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> that chain reaction. Okay. <laughs> okay. Was that an airborne chain reaction? <laughs> wow, that chain reaction like that halfway happen. through the hallway. Yeah, that's grenades. So like chain. when you when you kill an enemy with a grenade, their drops go flying, and those flying grenades can still be part of a chain reaction. And I believe that's what happened there. That was a flying chain reaction. That was from so far away. That's actually like one of the most insane chain reactions I have ever seen. <laughs> Oh boy. Right. Dark door dark door coming up here. Yes, this was the first door that ever got uh bumped in a speed run. He's throwing that grenade to delay a checkpoint. He's gonna get a checkpoint right before these flood spawns. There's a specific one he's gonna shoot, and if it falls down after two pistol shots, it's a reviver. First try dark. First try, oh. let's go. Oh my god. <laughs> he's got another ten dollars. Awesome, dude. <laughs> yep, that's the first try dark. You got who 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 said that? Uh to Tunguska, I think. Yep. All right, get in Actual, here. Actually, new runner, I think. Oh, is he? Cool. I didn't recognize yeah, I seen him in the Discord. That's awesome. What up? What up, Tunguska? Just yeah, gonna play it safe here. He's really awesome about supporting marathons. Yeah. So there's a. He's gonna do a small uh, deload here by jumping right on the edge, and that actually avoids spawning enemies into this section, which is nice because it's not like that dangerous of a section but if you're mm -hmm. one red health it's you, you got to play really safe and there's still like a decent chance you could also die. it gives you a it's really nice rifle. checkpoint here too so that's yeah it's pretty true. nice yeah, okay. yeah any any time you can remove any sort of combat section it's definitely you want to do it because even if there's only a small chance of dying all those little small chances really add up definitely yeah, that's one of the like funny things about speedrunning. It feels like, oh, this this tiny chance got me, but really you did like several hundred, mm -hmm. like one, yeah. in a, one in a hundred chances. One of them's gonna get you. So this is the ninety second room. You're supposed to have to wait in this room for ninety seconds, but we are speedrunners and we do not wait for doors. So he's gonna walk back into the door, let it close on him, with clip, which clips him into the geometry. He's gonna stand in a specific spot on this invisible ledge, look at a certain pixel, and then move left, and it's gonna teleport him up on top of. The entire structure and he's gonna jump over onto an invisible okay. light structure Whoa. which is why it's called light bump uh-oh <laughs> oh okay but he's got a checkpoint it's all good <laughs> just have to clip out of bounds again and then once he's on top of this, this is actually a double teleport he teleports first yeah. on top of the map then once he's there he jumps over to the light fixture and because he's jumping onto it from out of bounds he can kind of clip into that in a weird way and he's gonna turn around look at this very specific pixel again and I believe hold left, and then hopefully uh, bump uh, like a hundred yards east. I think. I actually, don't know. Is there an? Yeah, you can you can tell with an assault uh, weapon this level. Yeah, I don't know if it's. But east, but re regardless yeah. of what cardinal direction is, it's towards <laughs> the end of the level. Yeah, and that's a desirable. That's what we need to know. Yeah, but the the one downside of this of skipping this room is that this used to be the break room. You know, if you were streaming this game and you were <laughs> playing this this level and you got to this room you could there was a corner you could hide in where the enemies would never find you and you could just go grab a drink from the kitchen you could go to the bathroom you can go feed your cat check the mail do whatever you want you're in the 90 second room you can just chill okay just leave your computer. teleport it is a very finicky teleport unfortunately 
Here we go. And uh, as you can see, he's actually, uh, for anybody who didn't notice, we're playing on Master Chief Collection, the the 2020 remake? The, the, it's the 2011 remake uh, well, that got ported yeah. to 2014 and then reported in, in 2019, 2020. Yeah. Um, and there you go. He teleported. So you can actually switch to the new graphics or the old graphics based on, uh, you know, it's, it's just hitting a button. But there are certain tricks where the lineups are better on the new graphics. There are certain tricks where it's better on the old graphics. You can just hot swap between them. Yeah. So, and there's a there's a trick in the next level which essentially pretty much requires the new graphics. Yes. Nobody has ever even come close to doing like a fraction of the trick. There's like yeah. twenty or twenty five triggers you have to hit. I don't think anybody's yeah. even tried. Yeah. Like you, yeah. you could hit like two. It's not on the old Yeah. Uh, a a, a taskbot could do it. But oh yeah. Second nobody. Could do it, nobody's yeah. been powerful enough yet to do it. Uh, he's going to do a small grenade jump here. You're supposed to go down into this little tunnel that he just jumped over, but he's going to grenade jump through last, this hole. Best flood bump of the level, hopefully, if we get yep. the right RNG. Again, 40% chance oh. of a reviver. Shotgun guy. Will you do this? This is definitely, I think, the least consistent one. There isn't no. like a... There... <laughs> uh. Yeah, there's oh. no reliable setup to get a reviver here. And even getting the flood in position is hard because, oh. like, he just stared down a shotgun guy and trusted that the shotgun guy wasn't going to pull the trigger and that he was going to yeah. run towards him, which happened. Which Oh, I don't scary. have a fragnate. This is bad. Uh-oh. Uh Uh-oh. That is bad. I need another human flood. All right. Well, there's one cookwork. more grenade jump. Yeah, if you're if you're sick with the timing, there's yeah. one grenade jump left that's extremely important at the end of this level. Are you a reviver? And, uh... Uh, I mean, <laughs> I could go back. All right, uh, I'm believing in the plasma okay. nade jump. Yeah. This is gonna be right. kind of rough. Let's hope. So I the way this it. section works is that the last, last, last door of the level, it starts to open, it stops halfway for about a second, and he's going to try to clip, or jump through at that exact moment, because as the door finishes opening, it spawns like 20 flood on the far side of it, and uh, he's going to hopefully get past hey. them before they spawn. First try. Oh my, that's insane. Nice. That timing is really hard. If you're using yeah. a frag grenade, you can just wait for the door to start moving and then throw the grenade. It's super easy timing. But with the plasma, the, the, the timer is way longer and you have to predict it beforehand. Yeah. Well, that, that's a difficult backup to, to get Definitely. first try. <clears throat> and now it's a 63 second Very cutscene. Yep. Quick Great dono? For, uh, yeah. yeah, we got a quick dono here. Uh, we got that $10 donation from X Tunguska saying, Wonderful. we in there. <laughs> so there you go. Thank you very much for your $10 there. Awesome. Thank you, Tunguska. All right. So the next level is Two Betrayals, a level with a fantastic history, a level that people used to complain about a lot, and now they complain about the same amount, but in a new way. Um, <laughs> it, it used to be like the hardest combat level by such a huge margin. It's just so much more difficult than any other level for the speed run in terms of combat on Legendary. There's just no way to skip anything there's just piles and piles of flood and covenant and like banshees and just explosions it's so hard and the speedrunners are obviously just running past all that grenade jumping past stuff doing these really risky strats it was a very big point of frustration and then uh then at we some found point, a way to skip everything <laughs> yeah um you're Except the, the, way to skip it. The, the way to uh, skip it is pretty rough <laughs> yeah yeah no, it's it's a level called it's a it's a trick called Banshee out of level, where you take the Banshee and you go out of the level, which sounds great. But the problem is uh, the triggers on this level are not skippable. So he's going to glitch out of the level with the Banshee, but he still has to hit all of the triggers as if he's running through the hallways. So he has to fly through the level and hit all the invisible triggers, which have no indication if you're hitting them or not. It's I think one of the like 25. There's like a little explosion there's that like, happens. There's like two, yeah, there's like two or three triggers two. where you can like see couple? whether or not you hit it. But the thing is, some of those come really late, so <laughs> you have to the make first sure. One is yeah. like 25 triggers in. Yeah. And then there's a couple after that. Yeah. So this is where the the Master Chief Collection thing, where you can switch to the new graphics. Why comes are these in. guys alerted? What? 
<laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to search that's what's bad luck. So, the of like I said earlier, the uh, in the the new graphics in this game, the the thing her. that makes them really good out of bounds is you can see every part of the level, not just the last room you were in. So all the textures are loaded out of bounds, whereas in the original version, uh, only the room you were last in, the textures will be loaded. So you couldn't see anything in the in, in out of bounds. Yeah, you're totally blind. So he actually did a deload there, we should mention. Normally when you open that door, there are way more enemies out there, and they're out here, and they're driving vehicles around and shooting at you. But if you press the door button twice at a very specific timing, it like tries to close the door again, which cancels the trigger, but it fails to close it. So he can come out here and just grab the energy for free. He does still have to go back and hit the trigger. That's that's the main problem with Tuba Trials, is that every single trigger needs to be hit without exception. Um, so there's a bit of backtracking that has to be done, but it's still way faster and way, way, way more reliable than uh, doing it regularly on foot. Yeah. You see all the enemies are spawned now that I hit the, the trigger for real. Okay. So that's why we skipped it. <laughs> I flew really low to, to make sure I get a checkpoint here. Okay, kill the elite, that's important. So, he's going into the first uh, generator here, which is one of three in the level. Uh, you have to hit to, to progress, and he'll leave the Banshee there in a specific spot, which is uh, going to be used to set up the trick later on. So, hits the generator, and a bunch of Sentinels will spawn around him. But if you're quick to run out, it's not a big issue. And now it's then, yeah, gets the second Banshee, leaves this in a very, very specific spot. You have to be, put it right here, so it's at the edge of a load zone. And then he's going to use the Banshee oh. to fling out. This is using the same mechanic you saw on AOTCR to get the, the Elite out. I didn't mean to. <laughs> Get oh, out yeah, of the we're, we're checkpoint there. Yeah. So yeah, waiting for a checkpoint, for a checkpoint fling. There. fling out of bounds, and now he's gonna traverse. Okay. Uh, on these, I'll I'll shut up actually. See, so let you focus. All right. So he just hit a load zone, which deloaded the outdoor area. No, way fell. Now he's gonna progress <laughs> back to that banshee. No. Oh. Yeah, it's oh, pretty but... tough sometimes with that banshee because you have to jump inside of it, but like you're out of bounds of the level, so yeah. there's actually no yeah. floor, so you have to jump yeah. into the banshee, and the, the banshee's like weird, of like a hitbox to jump into. Here we go. Yeah, so what what we're abusing here is the. The way the level is set up in terms of what's low, what collision is loaded at a certain time. We say like a certain BSP is loaded. Um, so we're loading one BSP in, uh, which is the, the generator there, which is just one area of collision. And then we're going back uh, to the, the area we were previously at, but we're skipping the load trigger that loads in the collision by going out of bounds. So what I did right no, there was load my Banshee's textures so I can see my Banshee while out of bounds here. It's kind of important. Yep, so all of this geometry you're looking at is fake. This is not actually loaded right now, but the triggers are loaded. So this is the technically the area where he would be running through later in the level, but he's just flying through and pausing in each of the, the invisible triggers, which were, you know, meticulous and mapped out and you know, we found the best route and there's actually a cooperative version of this strategy um, where you can get two banshees out of bounds at the same time and each of you goes in like tandem hitting these triggers in a really cool like uh, fast way um, and I believe uh, Svo and Scales just got a world record with yeah. that cut the last yeah they, they beat uh, Cordiaxis in my record Yesterday. Oh, that was your record that <laughs> yeah. they bought. Oh, that, yeah. that's an awesome. Crazy. Yeah, that's that's co-op only. So one thing you'll see him doing here is shooting uh, seemingly randomly. That means he's in one in one of the triggers, and he's trying to time it so that he's in the trigger for exactly 
for more than more than uh, one second because the triggers only check about once a second. Um, so yeah. by shooting, I think it's five shots. You guaranteed you're inside it Here we for go. a nice. second. So it's just a timing thing. Nice. So that's yeah, the first that important explosion. trigger to yeah. hit. So you see that explosion, it means that you've hit all those triggers correctly. And now there's a couple As more to go. Saying, <laughs> okay. It's a very, very easy. If you're trying to go fast, which speedrunners do, it's very easy to just miss a trigger. Like you totally entered it, but you just didn't linger for long enough and it didn't detect you because these triggers are trying to detect a Master Chief on foot, not a flying vehicle. So they only check once in a while and they can very easily miss you. Yep. So that uh, Cortana dialogue and uh, text in the top left means is another confirmation that he hit all the triggers so far. So I think this the this outer area is where the first iteration actually stopped. And then somebody decided, you know, what if we just went even further and went all the way to the second generator, yeah. still out of bounds. The game still thinks that we're at the first generator. That's the the actual like l section of the level that it has loaded right now is kilometers away. All of this is fake. None of these gra graphics exist in the MCPC version that lets you see this. But it still lets us hit the triggers, and once he hits this trigger, I think he's gonna go back to the. Yeah, there's there's one more at the exit here, and then you. Oh, sorry, there's one more, and then he's gonna go all the way back, and then he has to go. Um, Sorks mentioned the BSP loads. He has to load the chunks of the level, in order, while staying out of bounds with the Banshee. Yeah. So one thing you may be asking is why don't we just do this for the entire rest of the level? And there's one trigger. Which allows us, which doesn't allow us to do that, and that's one trigger in particular later in the level is tied to a certain amount of flood being dead, and those flood won't spawn unless the collision is loaded in. So that that trigger and that trigger alone doesn't allow us to do this all the way to the end of the level. Yep, our our Halo scientists, our research and development squad has poured over those scripts for years, just trying to find some possible way to skip just just this little cluster of flood you throw one grenade and they die that's it that's yeah. all that it takes and we've been unable to to crack them for you know almost 20 years now yeah so one thing i didn't we didn't mention there is chronos hadn't gotten a checkpoint until now for the last three or four minutes while he was doing this whole thing out of bounds that is true and he just got one and that is uh what make what can make this trick very scary is the lack of checkpoints. Okay. <laughs> and yeah, we did it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, wipe that, wipe that brow. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, oof, that's a run ruiner if that goes badly. Thing that is, was awesome. that was really well done. Once I get that BSP low checkpoint, I don't get any checkpoints for the rest of the level. So I have to not die here to any of this rocket flood or banshees or anything here. Which it's entirely I, possible if they shoot at you, so it's kind of scary. <laughs> I did I not know that that was true. That's terrifying. You can get chased by banshees, you can get wraith mortared, you can get stuck by a grunt, you can get rocket flooded. There are so many ways to die. Yeah. Yep. <sighs> I'm on edge. I was so calm a second ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Another rocket flood. Oh. Yeah, they're always scary. They very rarely kill you, though. But it lo always looks super scary. Yeah, they don't lead their shots very well. They wouldn't do well mm. on like a dial-up connection. Yeah. So another cool trick here. We're gonna squeeze our banshee through this door in a very particular way. And normally you would be forced to go on foot at this point, but through some very, very clever maneuvering, you can just squeeze it through. The poor bungee designer was so determined to have the player do the rest of this level on foot. But we are speedrunners and we do not obey the design. <laughs> can see him so going hitting... out of the way. For, yeah, for a trigger there. Yeah, he's hitting. There are two triggers to hit on this bridge, but he does them in a unique order. He hits the first trigger, then pushes the button to open the door, then hits the second trigger. Because the second trigger spawns rocket flood and a bunch of other flood with guns. So if you do them in that order, it's like a thousand times safer to get through. Yep. And now the next so, group of enemies you're going to see is the uh, the infamous the infamous five yeah. that uh, that need to die. You actually watch them spawn in, which is great. Ta-da! There they are. 
Uh, at least it. <laughs> it's not not these not this not this particular group has to die, but five five flood in this area, and those yeah, are just any five sort of the easiest to to take out. So I believe there are two more invisible triggers he has to hit, and then he's going to go to that orange nav point on the edge of his screen, and that'll be the end of two betrayals. And he barely had to fight anything, which is such a treat yeah. to behold. You know, having spent so many years <laughs> doing this, uh, doing this level on legendary and yeah. dealing with all of the uh, all of the problems, the bridges, the hell room, the the nade jump room, the everything, and it's all gone now. It's a, it's a treat to see. Yeah. And now we're moving on to Keys, uh, the shortest level in the game, and the last flood bump that you're going to see. Yeah. Which and, and it's actually harder than it used to be, because the, the OG version of this game had a 100% consistent setup to get a reviver. And now the MCC version has like 14 different like 80% <laughs> setups that people swear yeah. are 100% and everyone's disagreeing yeah. about which one's the best. Oh, this one's 100% for me. Uh, and then it doesn't work like for someone hardware else. Dependent. Yeah, so I'm, I don't know which which setup Kronos uses, but... Um, I think you just use the spam version, right? Yeah, I'm using Savu's spam version. I think this should be good. If it's a red grunt on Legendary, it generally means you have a reviver if you do the minip correctly. That was a red grunt, so... So if, he, if the flood falls down after one overcharge, then that's a reviver. And he should drop one plasma grenade, which is going to be very important. So nice thing about this level is the start of the level is right near the end. So if you, if you can just flip flip through this wall here, we're right at the end of the level. Yep, there's a huge outdoor sequence that you may remember if you've played this game that we will not be doing. Got some frozen AI because we skipped the trigger that actually activates them, but they do still need to die because they can... So not only do you have to fight them on the way out, but they also come alive during this cutscene and they will come up and kill you. <laughs> yeah. And that will revert you. There are two different ways to die in this cutscene. The Master Chief you're seeing in the cutscene is a fake version. The real Master Chief has been teleported underneath this platform. And so if the Flood killed the Master Chief up top, it doesn't matter because he's fake. But if they spot the one below this platform, they will kill him and it will revert you to your checkpoint. It's very, very frustrating when that happens. Because yeah. it's a long cutscene. It's a 34 second yeah. cutscene. Unskippable. I have to watch the whole thing again. Now we finally get to take out keys once and for all. Boom. Got it. Never gonna rescue him again. <laughs> we need to get back to the pillar of autumn. Let's go back to right. the shuttle bay. That's it. And now this is where the important plasma grenade comes in. I guess he has four now, he got some nice drops. But yeah. These these elites here, you you throw some nice nades and they just stare at the nades and dodge them and look at that. Z literally zero damage. He's got full shields just running through like a bunch of spec ops elites and runs. Nice. Now just running to the end trigger of the level, which is a banshee. You have to get into yeah. to escape the ship. Okay. Interesting thing about these banshees is they can fly through collision. Not like we did in the last level, where the collision wasn't loaded. This banshee can just fly through walls. walls I believe it's a cool. it's a special banshee just for the cutscene. Because this banshee, this is the one that gets used in the cutscene, and I think it was explained in a developer commentary somewhere that like the AI flyer in the cutscene kept breaking and like hitting walls and getting stuck, so they just gave it the ability to fly through walls as like a failsafe in case the cutscene glitched. The banshee would still oh, get that's it. Interesting. That's how it was explained to me. Yeah. Uh, it also flies very differently from the other banshees in the game. Like it, it yeah. controls completely differently. Yeah, I think it's, it's like a snapshot of like an in-development banshee. Like yeah. that's how the banshee that's was. Right. Yeah. Four months That's before the release, and then, yeah, yeah. There, there, there are a lot of little like artifacts like that that really reveal that this game was kind of, you know, slapped together, or rushed. I guess like it still turned out phenomenally. I love this game, but yeah. it was clear that there were, uh, you know, some things that just. Some I mean, things lucky that for us, lucky for uh, us, that some of the things we are able to abuse. Yeah, absolutely. Ooh, need that shotgun. Nope. Uh, this is the Maw, last level of the game, fantastic level. We're going to be out of bounds for a while. Uh, this door smashes open and knocks him out of bounds. And thanks to the new graphics, we can hop along rafters and walls and light fixtures. He's going to hit a uh, loading zone here through the ceiling. It's kind of tough to hit load zones, but it's important too because you need geometry to stand on. 
and he's going to do yep. once again yet another teleport. Um, this, this is a teleport is... that is oh, sensitivity no. dependent. Wait, why did I revert? Oh no. <laughs> okay. What? Oh. Whatever. It, it's fine. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a very tough setup. So this the the platform he was doing there is actually pretty new. The 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 first version of this trick actually ran it like fought through those hallways. It got through the load zone normally, and then there's a second door that does the like smash open animation. You'd use that one to get out of bounds. But now because we have MCC as of a few months ago, we can do uh, what is called extended bump, where you bump earlier and you stay out of bounds for longer. Um, and the uh, the teleport he's going to do is going to take him past. The, the cafeteria section of this level, which if you've watched old Halo speedruns, you probably saw people platforming across that. Um, that's the old version of this strat to skip the bridge. Um, now there's just a teleport. Um, but as I said, it's sensitivity dependent because you need to look at a very specific pixel. But the way mouse movement works in this game, uh, you can only get your cursor into the right position at a certain sensitivity. So you'll you if you have if you somehow see the settings of heavy Halo oh, speedrunner, you will bad. notice. <laughs> oh, okay. Almost every single one of them is using 2.1 sensitivity. So the teleport went perfectly, and then what just happened? Uh, <laughs> if you explode out of bounds. Yeah, if you get stuck at one of the corners there, you can just sort of die. It's just a weird thing. Okay, I've not <laughs> seen, that. Never seen that before. That's, yeah, <laughs> that's death corner, I guess. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so, so on the old no, version no. of the game, he would have to get back in bounds here because none of this would be rendered. But because we're on the new version, um, he can just clip up through this hallway and skip the uh, the cryo room, skip the rocket hall, which is great because you don't have to fight a rocket flood, but kind of less great because you don't get the rocket launcher from it. So he is going to have to divert over to the armory to pick up the rocket. Well, but then he's going to do something cool with it. <laughs> okay, that elite really messed up my shields. That's unfortunate. Oh, that's bad. Uh, bad dodge. Uh, you should be fine, though, for backup strats. Yes, you right. want as much overshields as possible because you're going to use them for some boosts soon. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to do some backup rocket jump here. You'll notice that he's selected frag grenades early because your HUD disappears here and he needs to have the right grenade out and there's no way to... Alert. The monitor has yeah. In the later games, there is a small audio cue when you switch to a grenade, or like off its type. I don't think that's in this game though. Yeah. So there, there is a, a fancier rocket jump that's possible there if the elites in the previous room decide not to shoot you, and they usually don't, but uh, they did today. So we did the, as you said, it's the backup strat, which is still a cool rocket jump. Ooh, okay. scary. Now we gotta blow the four reactors, and uh, there's actually a an IL only strat. Uh, I'm just going to, to wait blow these for reactors. the cycle correctly. Okay, this should be fine for the but cycle. It's, it's not full game safe, and it's definitely not marathon safe. Scary. Yeah, so these. these... These engines have these little rafters going up and down on a cycle, so it's very important to uh, time everything correctly so you you are able to shoot at the right time into the engines. Yep. I think it's one of the very few cases uh, where this game actually has cycles in the traditional speedrunning sense. Yeah, for sure. Very scary clear here. Very high chance of explosion. Yeah, no okay. <laughs> yeah. A few large guns drop their, their few rods and explode after a while, so... And then the spec ops we are able to drop, what is it, six nades each or something? Something like that, yeah. You yeah. can get like 18 Thanks. grenades in there. <laughs> and now I'm just driving end section here. So I guess it's a good time to give shoutouts. <laughs> So, big shout outs to the Halo Runs community. Yeah. <laughs> That's us. Definitely the best. <laughs> One of the best yeah. communities. One of the yeah. best? Come on. <laughs> come on. Come on. Come on. It's been, it's been, no, for real, it's been amazing, the community recently. The, the growth, the growth and the. We've been running all sorts of events or that Kronos himself have yeah. been uh, 
in charge of, and it's been going really well. Yeah. Yeah, he's our <laughs> events coordinator. Yeah, so, yeah. Halo speedrunning. <laughs> Halo speedrunning only really started in like 2004. Nobody really did it before that. There were a couple of people, but it wasn't like there weren't videos of it. It wasn't organized. Um, but over the years, it's been kind of fragmented as a community. You know, it's been there's been a couple of different websites. There's like a Google spreadsheet for a while. There's been different chat rooms. Yeah. Like, it's kind of faded in and out of popularity as games come out, as like contests get held. Um, it's just sort of been like okay until about 2014 or like 2013. There was just this huge revival, which. Um, uh, we got to mention Mr. Monopoly. Um, he brought Halo back to GDQ. And then uh, after him, I was given the opportunity to, to perform at GDQ. And um, the those of us who were playing the game at the time, we came together. We made HaloRuns.com in 2014. And since then, there's just been an absolute like eruption. There's unbelievable growth of really awesome people who like care about the game. They're really friendly. They're super... like. If every time I see a new person show up in the Discord saying like, "Hey, how do I do this thing?" Everybody's super friendly. They'll they'll, they'll show up in their stream chat, like tell them how to do a trick, tell them how to set up the software, yada yada. It's it's beautiful to see. It's really really awesome. Yep. yep. And for instance, some of the events that we have going on right now is the Halo Runs Grand Prix. So we select like yeah. a, a random level from any of the Halo games, and basically the top like times get points and it's pretty cool you've got a week right <laughs> yeah to do a, a week for... you, got, you got a week to yeah. run. and, and you can't you can't cool. submit old runs so it kind of encourages people to like replay old levels and maybe beat their pb on a level they've been neglecting for a while yeah. and it allows and people to levels, try different diff- like different halo games too so if you yeah, just play halo one you might be like hey i might try halo two or halo three and it gets people interested in those other games too yeah. yeah, and we're been... living in a time where it's easier than ever to play multiple Halo games where, with the Master Chief Collection on PC. We're not quite there with all of the games out yet, but man, as soon as they're all out on PC, those Grand Prix are going to be super awesome. 360 swag, by the way, coming up. Let's oh, yeah. take a this quick is, visit iconic. to Mr. Grunt here, since we have yeah, yeah, a yeah. lot of time. Uh, plastic. Everyone's favorite Easter egg. Are we, are we beating estimate here? What was your yeah. estimate? Uh, 130 yeah. was the estimate, so... Oh, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> Fun grunt. Fantastic. No. Peace. <laughs> <Fun grunt. laughs> okay, that's cruel. That's no. Come on. That's tragic. Yep. Everyone, get your 360 swags ready in chat. Oh yeah. Kevin Turtles. Oh, I love this part of the trick. And this is not even, it's not, like, it is swag, but it's also, like, good. It's, it, well, it's flips, it stops it from That's not moving. a good 360. Okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. More like a 180. Swag. Backflip. Okay. Oh, okay, we're facing the wrong. <laughs> okay, we got it. We got it. Okay. Uh, 270 swag, kind of? Yeah. Yeah, if you drive straight off there without a 360, there's a pretty decent chance that your vehicle flips. Yep. Just the nature of the uh, and there's one trick remaining. There's like less than a minute left in the run, but there's still a trick. There's a set of barrels here where, once again, the bungee designers wanted you to stop and get out of your vehicle. In time comes once uh, we hit the ramp here, so that was yeah, really clean. Cuts. Okay, so nice and barrels. And very nice. Barrels. Time. Let's go. <laughs> Great run. GG. <laughs> very nice run, Carlos. Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. We also have the Halo Runs Relay that'll be next month, so if you're interested in seeing a lot of top runners run, I think we have like, what, four full game record holders yeah, we got... or something. Yeah. I, th- I think we almost awesome. have or almost even more record like, holder. Yeah. And in that'll there. be in June 28th, so if you're interested in more Halo speed running, be sure to check that out at... Uh, twitch.tv slash halo races and yeah <laughs> sweet check out Kronos, That's halo. Kronos yeah fantastic zone. job dude thanks to Goat oh, Rope and Sorix for helping me commentate here <laughs> Root thanks was for really nice. this was super fun <laughs> yeah yep. thank you for letting and us do this also shout outs to Hark who's running next so yeah, wish good him luck to Hark. some good oh, yeah. luck with Halo 2 yeah Halo 2 very cool run. <laughs> Fancy a look? 